Good morning, everyone. Aaron Outdoors here. Vlog number 35. It is March 7th, 2022. And Ukraine is still a mess. And the world is in total chaos. Markets are tumbling. Oil prices are skyrocketing. People are starving. Energy shortages are happening. And it's pretty much all because the United States and every country in the world keeps putting these stupid sanctions on Russia like it only affects them. Psh, dipshits. All right, so. <laughs> Last time, I had a few things to say about Ukraine, but I wasn't prepared to go into detail because I needed to do more research. I have done more research. <laughs> and now I'm more prepared to talk about it. So we're going to see how good my memory is of the things I've learned over the last couple of weeks. All right. Top of the list. Azov Battalion. One of several highly nationalist, far-right, neo-Nazi, many of them self-professed neo-Nazi militias are official parts of the Ukrainian National Guard and the United States, along with Europe, including Germany, are sending weapons to Nazi in the Ukraine. To fight the Russians, okay, but where does it end? Isn't this how it got started last time? <laughs> I mean, we didn't send weapons to them last time. This time we're just sending them guns straight out. Are, are we going, are we going to side with the Nazis when this gets out of control? Like, seriously, what the hell are they thinking? Germany, sending weapons to Nazis in Ukraine. What the hell? Anyway, just had to get that out. Because damn, just damn. <laughs> I cannot believe that's real. I was really expecting to find out that that was complete BS. But even if you go to Snopes, try as they might to bury it under 20 paragraphs of hyperbole and erroneous, non-relevant information, they will eventually come clean and tell you that in fact, we are arming neo-Nazis in Ukraine. All right, you can go to Wikipedia and look up Azov Battalion, and then for a hoot, take a look at the Azov Battalion's flag, and then go to Wikipedia and look up Hitler's 2nd SS Panzer Division and their flag. <sighs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> what is wrong with people? <sighs> Moving on. <sighs> Okay, but why the whole thing in Ukraine is happening at all? Why Putin is being a little prick and messing all this stuff up? Because let's be real, he didn't have to go in and invade. He didn't have to go in and kill people. He didn't have to support separatists in Luhansk and Donetsk, but he did it. And he didn't just do it flippantly. He didn't just do it without thinking about it. He didn't just do it because he's crazy and hell-bent on rebuilding Soviet Russia. He didn't do it for no reason at all, is what I'm getting to. His reason was NATO. Here's a fun fact. If Trump had won a second term, whether you believe he did or not, had he legitimately, openly, publicly, and to the establishment's great dismay, won a second term, this in all likely, likelihood would not have happened. That if Donald Trump had gotten his way, we wouldn't have this crisis today. Donald Trump wanted to do away with NATO, so there'd be no NATO. Donald Trump wanted to jump into bed with Vladimir Putin. He liked Vladimir Putin, so there relations between the United States and the Russians would be much better today. And Donald Trump also wanted to pivot to Asia. Donald Trump was the first president to recognize that China was uh, a peer competitor. Uh, but anyway, he didn't get his way with Russia. Because Trump wanted to do away with NATO. Trump was getting all buddy-buddy with Putin. And Trump saw the importance of us pivoting our attention to Asia, specifically China, 
and what they are doing because they are a peer competitor. Russia, not so much. Way down there on the GDP, okay? And that kind of depends, determines, you know, who you can beat in war. How much money you got in your war chest? What's your GDP? What's your gross domestic product? How much money can you put up to fight whoever? And we're number one, China's number two, and Russia's like, got the same GDP as like the state of Texas right now, okay? It's not a knock on the Russians, it's just where they're at financially, because, you know, they've had some rough times since this Soviet Union fell. The Iron Curtain fell, whatever you want to call it. Um, so this whole thing, Putin's excuse for doing all of this is because of NATO. Because of NATO expansion, and because, despite the Western media's attempts to just flat out blatantly lie about it, we did tell him we wouldn't expand NATO. We told him, okay? It wasn't in an official contract, but it has been revealed in the minutes of many, many meetings between Gorbachev and Baker and whoever was president at the time. I think it was Reagan. Yeah, Reagan was one. No, because, I don't know. Anyway, so it was Reagan, H.W. Bush, Clinton, the other Bush. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. We can't have multiple family. We can't have generational presidents. All right? That's, 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 that's the exact same thing as a generational monarchy. What the hell? Anyway. It's like, who cares if you can't be more president for more than two terms? You can just send all your family members in. <laughs> it's the same difference, isn't it? All your close personal friends and buddies, you send them in. It's just this whole, like, yo, you can only run for two terms. That's garbage. <laughs> That's fake democracy. Anyway. Ever since we told Putin, or Russia that we would not expand NATO, we've been expanding NATO. It's how Poland got in. It's how, like, Lithuania and Estonia and all these other little countries that border with Russia or very close to it got into NATO because we, despite saying we would not, expanded NATO. And every time we did, the Russians were like, hey, stop doing that. Don't do that. You're treading on our territory. You're infringing on our buffer zones. You're a threat to, you know, Russian security. And let's face it, the United States is pretty much the only country that's a threat to anybody. <laughs> and we're a threat to everybody because we got all the guns. <laughs> Hell, we make them. <laughs> and send them to other people and then fight those people. <laughs> oh, my God. It's either pure insanity or the best business model ever that nobody knows about. Not to mention highly unethical. Uh, London, what are you doing? <whistles> London! London wandered off. I don't know why. London, what are you doing? Okay. Here we go. <laughs> and we're good. Okie dokie. <laughs> Sometimes they like to get out for a dip. They don't tell me. I have to stop. So the whole time, yeah, Russia just keeps telling us, stop doing this, stop doing this, stop doing this. And then we're sending weapons to all these people. We've loaded up Ukraine with so many Javelin missiles. That the Russian invasion is, well, that's why it's going to be a bloody mess because we sent a shit ton of guns to a bunch of people who really aren't that like awesome at fighting <laughs> the russians on the other hand oh man they like to fight <laughs> it's like their thing <laughs> here's some tough cookies all right they, they they are the other reason hitler was defeated it wasn't just us russians put up a unbelievable fight and lost a unbelievable number of soldiers in World War II. And holy crap. Uh, and it, despite that, built the USSR on top of the ashes of that. Tough, tough people, tough people. They have come back once many times before. They're another... They're not just a, a nation state, they're practically a, what do they call it? I can 
always forget what it's called. Not a nation state, but a, not a culture state. Uh, I forget it. It's what the Chinese are. It's just, it's when you didn't just create a government. Like you've got a whole culture that's been around for thousands and thousands of years. And the governments have come and gone, but the, the culture has remained. Uh, such is the case with China and such is the case with Russia. Uh, interesting fact, Russians have never had a democracy before, <laughs> ever. <laughs> so, I mean, Russian people have been around for a while. If they really wanted one, they'd have one, right? <laughs> yeah, the United States led the way. Lord knows we were pushing to get them to start one. But even after the like, Iron Curtain fell, the Russian people were free to set up what kind of government they wanted. They went with uh, Putin. <laughs> well, first there was another guy. Uh, after Gorbachev, what was the key? That wasn't Khrushchev. No, Khrushchev was during JFK. Um, I'll have to look that up. I'm sure there's something flashing here right now to tell you. <laughs> what I have forgotten. But that's what it's all about. It's about NATO constantly expanding. And what the whole thing is that NATO rose up as a deterrent after the World War II after World War II, as a deterrent against other forces, namely Russia. They were concerned about Russia at the time, taking over all of Europe after, you know, they were downtrodden by Hitler. And that was a legitimate concern, because they were. The Soviets were definitely into that. Um, so they made NATO, and they stopped it. And the Iron Curtain and the Soviet government fell and collapsed in on itself. And at that point, NATO was no longer necessary. It was definitely not necessary for the United States to be involved in it. The problem with it is that any member country of NATO, if any country that is a member of NATO gets attacked, the agreement is that an attack on one of us is an attack on all of us, and we are obligated to go in and fight with soldiers on the ground to defend them if requested. Um, and there's so many other things that come into play. It's got to do with, of course, you know, resources and pipelines and <laughs> gas and currencies. And there's all sorts of things. But, I mean, the main thing is just Russia's mad because we kept expanding NATO and we said we wouldn't. And if Trump had gotten his way, NATO wouldn't exist anymore. <laughs> we wouldn't have this problem in the first place. Dude, I, you know, it still to this day boggles my freaking mind. Nobody freaking noticed this, apparently. I mean, a lot of people noticed this, but they were all Republicans, so nobody listened to them. Unless they were also Republicans, because everybody's still in their echo chamber. Which is why nobody listens to me, because I'm not an echo chamber. <laughs> or if I am, I'm like the echo chamber that contains all other echo chambers. <laughs> I got all the echo chambers. I listen to them all. I take it all in. Process it. Analyze it. So... They, um, yeah, so the whole time Trump was president, we, 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 weren't, we weren't at war, really, with anybody. ISIS quieted down, even. There was no terrorist attacks on us of notable consequence. There was just really nothing in the news about conflict at all. Everything was about the Democrats desperately trying to crucify Trump every chance they got. It was like the entire freaking world stopped, and that was the only thing that mattered, and that alone was weird. And to, I still, like, what the hell was that about? What's it still about? They haven't stopped. <laughs> I mean, holy crap. If it wasn't for COVID, <laughs> they would have, they, and they're still back on it. It's just like, oh, Trump's constantly in the news. Oh, these, we're after him for this. We're after him for that. They just will not stop. And the funny freaking thing is, everything they're going after him for are things that are actually legal, but the American people don't know are legal. All this stuff about tax evasion and blah, blah, blah. Nah, he's just doing his taxes the way rich, rich people do their taxes. Ah, quick note, rich people don't pay taxes. <laughs> There's a whole weird thing, not just with deductibles, but where they borrow money. And so all the money that they spend or use for living and buying stuff is all borrowed money. And somehow that equates to them never having to pay taxes because you don't pay taxes on a loan. Um, so, but then they always pay the loans back before the, like, it, it, it's more complicated than I can get, really get into. I'm still 
working out the deets for myself. Should I ever become wealthy? <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Anywho. Um, yeah, I, it's, it, it's just, there's so much weirdness. There's so much weirdness. And the media is not asking any questions. They're just, they're not news. They're just propaganda machines. <laughs> it's like, they're flipping out. <laughs> All the tech companies are flipping out. Hey, London, get back here. You're too far. Come on. Come on. Stay close. Stay close, buddy. Come on. Good boy. So the big tech companies are flipping out saying, oh, we got to tell everybody, you know, who the media sources are and, and that they're, you know, fake news, fake news and blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, that's all our mainstream media puts out is fake news. They pretend to be news, but they are really just giving you opinions based on very little, if any, facts at all. <laughs> that is not news. That is propaganda. And when you call it news, that makes it fake news. <laughs> but are the big tech companies shutting down MSNBC, NBC, ABC, CBS, CNN, FOX, la 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 la? No. Because they're bullshit. <laughs> and if the people ever get their head out of their ass, they are screwed. But I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> it doesn't seem like it, at least. I just, oh, God. How? I, I, I don't, I, I'm like, how could this happen? Well, I can tell you how this could happen. <laughs> it happened, it could happen how it happened. So, forces at work that have a lot of money and a lot of interests, and they put all their money into making sure their interests are served in every way possible because duh <laughs> people cry about morality and ethics but the only real rule on this planet is if you can do it do it it's like yeah. <laughs> yeah whatever so Russia's not wrong. They're not lying. It's not propaganda. Um, they have legitimate gripes. They're dealing with it completely in the most screwed up way possible, naturally, because that's just what governments do. And I'm going to say this again. I've said it many times before. I don't want to say it live on video. People, people do not go to war. Governments go to war. And then they manipulate their people into fighting and dying in those wars. Facts. And uh, I can't be upset about it because people keep doing it and it's obvious and everybody seems to be cool with it, generally speaking. You'd say they aren't, but you know, <laughs> then if you're not cool with it, why are you letting it happen? <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I don't understand. <sighs> I do understand. It's, it's difficult for people to be aware of the entire world around them because, generally speaking, most people are just far too concerned with their day-to-day -day lives. Um, and there are rare people like myself who have the time and personal motivation to look into things, but we're always nobodies that nobody listens to. And even the somebodies that people do listen to don't get anywhere. It's not like, a, okay, let's take Professor John J. Mearsheimer into consideration, shall we? Professor at the University of Chicago. He's an Air Force veteran. He's a West Point graduate. All right, this guy is as American as apple pie. Okay, and he is where I get a lot of this information from. All right, he is out there on YouTube all the time with a lot of other people. He has friends, it turns out. The Committee for the Republic is something interesting you should look up. Um, he gets interviewed on respectable, you know, YouTube channels like the University of Cambridge in England has a show called King's Politics. <laughs> you should check out their channel because every video that they have up there has like 
a few hundred views, uh, maybe a couple thousand views. But then their most recent interview of John J. Mearsheimer, 837,000 views. <laughs> and it just went up a couple weeks ago. <laughs> like, I'm sure they're freaking out. It's like, holy crap, this is like our best video ever. And that gives me hope because King's politics is, you know, youth, students. So they're aware. They know what's going on. There's a, a Twitter space that I was listening to the other day um, that had people from all over the world, millennials in particular. And they are not the dumb, woke douchebags that the right would have you believe. At least not all of them. <laughs> a lot of them are very intelligent, very thoughtful, very capable of critical thought. And it's, you know, I, I came away from that space very encouraged. I was like, wow, okay, well, maybe we're not all doomed. I think the problem, the main problem, is we got some of these Cold War era fossils running things. And, uh, you know, I got to give some more credit to John Mearsheimer for... Uh, reaffirming my faith in senior citizens. <laughs> I was starting to think they were all just completely garbage, but no, they're out there. It's just as usual, we don't get to see them. The media doesn't put them in the forefront. The media puts the idiots in the forefront. The media puts the people who tow the party line or the state narrative or the defense contractor agenda, which is what a lot of it boils down to. Uh, that's where you really got to start paying attention. It's like people get too caught up in this idea of like, you know, central banks rule everything and they do to a certain extent, but uh, these defense contractors do, <laughs> holy crap. <laughs> They're, you know, like everybody else in it for themselves. And they have found a business model that works very well, very efficiently. Uh, unfortunately, it's very destructive and chaotic for the rest of the planet. So, uh, I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying anymore. It's like, I don't know what anybody could do that would do something about it. It's like all the people who are supposed to protect us against these things are a part of the machine that drives conflict. <laughs> I mean, it's a conflict machine. Because there is a lot of profit in conflict. Conflict causes destruction and chaos and mayhem. And when you break things, somebody's got to fix them. Not to mention, you need a lot of equipment to break things. <laughs> so there's more. There's money in breaking it, and then there's money in fixing it again. And uh, you know, it's a it's a recyclable plan that has no foreseeable end. You know, you can always destroy stuff and make more. <laughs> No one's really trying to build something that just lasts and is good for everyone. <laughs> We're all just looking to build our own little cash machines. And, well, hate to say it, you know, a lot of us are benign in our efforts to create our little cash machines, but some of us are not. <laughs> some of us are very good at creating personal cash machines. And some of us... <sighs> Don't mind hurting a few people along the way, or a few million, or a few billion. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's easy when you're sitting far away from it all, and you don't have to face what you've done, ever. There's no consequences for it. Just a giant bank account, and the most luxurious life you could possibly imagine. Who'd say no to that? I mean, you hear about him sometimes. And those people get shot. <laughs> so, <laughs> because they don't have enough support. They just, nobody, nobody ever follows them up. It's like they shoot that person and nobody comes to stand up behind them. Everybody's just like, whoa, whoa, hey, no. None of that. <laughs> Forget that. <laughs> you know, beating these people means lining up a few people to get shot. Maybe a few hundred of leaders, a, line, a long line of leaders that care about the planet. Before we stop letting them just get shot, maybe look into fucking who actually did it. <laughs> I don't know. 
crazy right yeah, I know, I'm just nuts. <laughs> yeah. It's a crazy world, a lot to think about, and I highly recommend looking into it. Like this uh knowledge is power. It's uh it's a it's a power that anyone can have. It's something I've learned along the way. It's like cry or I cry about not having enough personal resources or enough or any money at all to do anything, but I do have the ability to learn. No one has taken that away from me and the internet has made it incredibly, incredibly easy to learn. And so that is a power that I have available to me and I am doing my best to make use of it. And I recommend you do too. Have a nice day.